make dark chocolate pancake with rum infused orange peel. Step 1. Peel your orange and chop up the orange peel into half an inch of small pieces. I had a hard time peeling orange here. I think I need to sharpen my knife. Then put the orange peel in a container or a jar. I had about a third of a cup here and add in your favorite rum. I use goat rum. It has subtle flavor of vanilla, citrus, almonds, and caramel. It's commonly used in baking. Here it enhances the citrus of the orange and when baked with chocolate, it brings out the richness of the chocolate flavor. You want the rum slightly cover the orange peel, so here the ratio is 1 to 1. And then seal the container, put in the fridge for over an hour, but preferably for overnight for best results. Step 2. Pour your walnuts on a baking sheet with parchment paper. Evenly spread them out. Put them in a preheated oven at 350 Fahrenheit for 8 minutes. After they're done, take them out. Let it cool for at least 5 to 10 minutes. Then put them on a cutting board. Chop them up into small pieces. Not too small, it's just bite sides should be okay. They smell so good I can't resist myself to eat a couple. And put them aside for later. Step 3. Measure and sift your dry ingredients. I use gram as my measurement today because it's just more accurate and gives out better results when it comes to baking. But you can also use cups as well. It's easy to find the conversion online so it's not a big deal. Now I'm sifting the flour at tap tap tap. Sometimes I use a spoon to let it go down faster and then it just form a mountain. Then I move on to measure and sift the coca powder. This part is fun because it just add colors to the mountain. It's harder to sift the coca powder because it just has a lot of lumps. But I had this for a while so... But look at the mountain, it's snowing! Step 4. Melt your chocolate. Put a bowl on top of the hot water and then add your chocolate. Let it melt for 5 to 10 minutes. I forgot to mention guys, you should add the baking powder in the flour and coca powder mix as well. I forgot that so I had to add it later but just so you know all the dry ingredients should be well mixed together ahead of time. So now the chocolate is fully melted, turn off the heat, leave it on top of the hot water for later use. Step 5. Beat the eggs. Here we use room temperature eggs, so we have to take them out of the fridge ahead of time. Now our prep work is basically done, so we move on to beat up the butter mix everything together put your softened butter in the bowl and use your spatula to kind of like mush them around and then give it a mix and then until they're like soft and smooth and then i switch to this electronic uh, mixer and then just beat them up on a medium speed then beat until the butter get a little bit white um, and puffed up. And then add your sugar. Um, divide your sugar into three sections and add them one at a time at three times. And then each time continue to beat the sugar into the butter until they're light and fluffy. I'm just gonna fast forward the beating process, it's just quite repetitive.
After all the sugars have been well mixed into the batter and they are like light and fluffy, then we start adding in the eggs mixture. The method, you add eggs one at a time. I divided the eggs mixture into three sections. So I add one section and then mix well with the butter and add the second one and mix well and then add the third one and mix well. Just make sure each time it is well mixed into the butter so you wouldn't see any separation. The ultimate goal is to have a smooth, soft, fluffy Mm, butter, eggs, sugar mixture. Seems repetitive, but it, it's actually pretty easy and pretty fun to play with it. Okay, so the last bit of eggs has been well mixed in and it looks great. Now I'm adding in the dark chocolate mixture. And then mix the chocolate well with the rest of the mixture. Just make sure there's no lumps and no separation. So now you can see a well mixed fluffy chocolatey butter. And then now we're adding in the dry ingredients. It's the same method. I divide them into three sections and mix them in one at a time. I always um, kind of stir it before I turn on the electronic button just so that it doesn't fly everywhere. Wow, look at this. They're well mixed. They're so fluffy and smooth. They're sticky. Now it's time to add in the secret weapon. Rum infused orange peel and walnuts. So we take the orange peel out of the fridge, drain the liquid out. Wow, this smells so good, guys. I'm not gonna let the rest of the rum go into waste. And then you just simply pull the orange peel in with the walnut, and then use the spatula gently fold them in and yeah this is where I added the baking powder I forgot in the earlier step it's not too late but try not to do this just add the baking powder with the flour and the cocoa powder together so after the orange peel and walnuts are well mixed into the batter now they're ready to get baked Line your loaf pan with parchment paper and pour your batter into this loaf pan. I use 4 times 7 today. They're a little bit sticky, so you have to use your spatula kind of spread them out evenly into the loaf pan. And at the same time, your oven should be at 350 Fahrenheit. Give them a little shake before you put into the oven and then bake it for 40 minutes. You can test it by sticking a toothpick into the center of the cake and see if it comes out clean. Now I'm preparing a little brush on top of the cake once it comes out of the oven to make it more fragrant and shinier. Simply put one tablespoon of warm water, one tablespoon of sugar, and half a tablespoon of the leftover rum, and then give it a mix until the sugar is well dissolved. Brush the liquid on top of the cake when they are still warm, 
I forgot to take the video of that part, but yeah, it does add a little bit more rum freckness and shine on your cake. I will take the cake out of the oven, let it cool to room temperature for a couple hours. Don't forget to brush your sugar water. As it's safe to do so, just pull the cake out of the loaf pan so it stops cooking. Because the loaf pan does contain a lot of heat even after taking out of the oven. Once the cake has completely cooled down, wrap them up in plastic wrap and then put them in the fridge for a couple hours or overnight. The pound cake tastes better the next day or even the second day. The flavors are more rich and it does get more moist and soft overnight. The moment of truth. It honestly looks pretty good and it smells very good. When I cut them up, the out layer is very crumbly, yet the inside is very moist and soft. And then the walnuts and orange peel just add way more texture in the cake. I finish it in like two days. They're so good. Let me know if you guys make it and what you think of it. And don't forget to comment below and subscribe for my channel. Thanks.